Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we'll be talking about Rex and MVS 3.8. Yes, I know these two things uh, sound like they don't really go together because M MVS SP is the first version that included Rex. MVS SP, as you know, was released in 1984. Um, had many uh, uh, enhancements beyond MVS 3.8. Uh, here's the announcement from uh, February 23, 1984. And one of the things that MVS uh, SP included was Rex. The other important thing was dual address space support so the two address space could work together, which is a key feature for DB2, even for DB2 version one. However, Rex um, uh, was included in that version and and uh, in the MVS that we use um, legally on uh, on top of Hercules, MVS 3.8 version J, there is no uh, REC support, and uh, and that's limited because uh, REC is is very important in the mainframe world. Um, uh, if you just look for REC and mainframe, you'll see that it really goes hand in hand. Uh, REC, of course, was originally written for VM, um, but was supported by IBM. Um, into MVS uh, quite soon and you find still today hundreds or thousands of scripts and stuff that are really meant to be run with Rex and without Rex in MVS 3.8 we were really um, um, quite a bit limited and so two community members Michael Jacobs and uh, sorry Peter Jacobs and Michael Grossman went and ported Rex to be to run on MVS 3.8 So in this video, we're going to download it and uh, and install it, hopefully, and get it to run and see what we can do with this uh, Rex version for MVS 3.8. Great news, really, for our community. Thank you so much, Peter and Michael. So downloaded already TK4, a uh, virgin version of TK4 update 8. Let me create a new folder here on my desktop called TK4, and then take everything and copy it in there because this is a compressed folder, as you can see. So let's move it all in there. That's an SSD disk, should be quite fast. And let's see, we're almost there. And boom, so that's it. Now we have this in TK4, a virgin installation of TK4, which for me means always going into the folder uh, and then go into the folder unattend uh, TK4 and then go into unattended and there's several scripts here to set into console mode so we can actually interact with the MVS console. I, I don't like to run in daemon mode where you don't have the, the console. Uh, maybe some people prefer that. For me, I, I want the console. So we do set console mode. Okay, so that's done and why don't we just start this. And that's how easy it is with Jurgen Winkelmann's amazing uh, distribution, MBS 3.8 TK4 Update 8, as of today, January 28th, 2019. It's already up and running. So um, I have a terminal session here. Why don't we connect this? And that's it. Now, uh, I also downloaded uh, the link, as I just uh, showed you on the Facebook page. If you follow the link that's in the description below this video, you will download this thing here. And in there, there is a website, which like a web page, uh, which has some uh, installation instructions and operation instructions. Why don't we follow this and see how this goes? Um, I have not done this yet, so um, let's see. Uh, let's try to follow this. Uh, it says here abstract document covers. Blah, blah, blah. So okay, so. Uh, you need to do an L LD mode S370X. So Brex 370 requires the S370 the instruction set. Uh, so the way you're going to organize this is that actually the, the Hercules that's in that comes with the MBS 3.8 A TK4 distribution, there is a Hercules already in there, and the Hercules that's in there is able to do even some S390 instructions. But what we want to do is we want it to force L, L, uh, S370X instructions, which are sometimes a little bit different. Okay, so we did that LD mode S370X, and that's it. It says module loaded, so that's running. Um, and now we need to put up the, um, there's a transmit package, which is a binary package in here. Yeah, that will be this one. 
let me put it uh, on here and we need to bring this up to the to the mainframe there's several ways to do it we could ftp it we could uh, move it up through the card reader we could there's several ways i just want to move it up with uh, terminal file transfer which means we have to first prepare a a, a, a sequential file to receive this this uh, transmit package so let's go and do that so her, 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 mvs is already up see you later is the password i log in and let's go create a data set it's called herb01 rex xmit i don't know how big this thing is let's see um it's one megabyte so we don't need a whole lot of space fb oh wait 80 bytes so that's fixed block 80 bytes uh let's put in 002 let's make it 10 cylinders 20 cylinders 10 and no directory blocks so it becomes a sequential file Okay, so that's done. We're gonna put upload this now into Herc01 Her Brex uh, transmit. Let's go all the way out of um, the panel system here into the TSO command line mode. And let's say TSO um, Brex, here it is. And we're gonna put it into uh, Herc01 Brex XMIT. Okay, and binary, very important that you set here binary because this is not ASCII it's binary TSO and let's put it up and that's already done let's go verify TSO apples yep here it is and it's nine percent uh, uh, nine percent full so uh, I saw something here there is uh, yeah this is the standard uh, so transmit packages need to be received with the TSO receive command. The only thing is that TSO 3.8 didn't have receive built in because that was a for payment product by IBM. So somebody went out there, I think Mike Rayborn, and wrote the receive uh, command, but it only works in batch in this version. There's no uh, command line version of, uh, of receive. Maybe one day if I have time, maybe between the next uh, Christmas, New Year cycle, I will sit down and write an interaction version of it. Maybe somebody else will beat me to it. But let's just take this, all this, and create a job. Um, let's go here, herb01, uh, test, cntl, receive, okay. And then let's take the, the bottom part. Okay, now let's save this. Let's see what it says. Make this a little bit thinner so we can put this on the side. Perfect. Um, so first of all, I want to make this oops caps on, and then uh, herc zero one receive R for receive, and I want to have a notify notify herc zero one. Okay, and then okay, there's a procedure here, so we need to change this herc. Okay almost the same way I called it. So the input is going to be Herc01 uh, Brex. This is where we stored our transmit package in a, a sequential data set. And this is where it's going to go. Herc01 Brex install. Makes sense. Uh, let me see here. Procedure and receive. Uh, this all looks fine. So what it's doing here, it's delete the old version of the target file in case there was one. We don't have one so this step is strictly speaking not necessary and this one will most likely throw an error but i think that's going to be fine so let's run it job 001 maximum condition code 8 yeah and i think that's the delete because we've never installed this before so then, uh, let's go check out the output uh, option 3.8 yeah yeah, the first step throws a frozen eight because it's trying to lead something that wasn't there that's to be expected uh, i would do this with an id cams so i would run an id cams and try to delete if it's not there then we'll, then i would set the return code back to zero so you would have a very clean uh, install but that's fine it's just a minor thing 
So all these were installed, that's fine. So let's go and see what happened here. Okay, so we got this installed. Just checking out the first one. Yeah, that all looks good. That all looks nice and dandy. Library content. Oh yeah, this is it. <clears throat> okay, so this was step two, which we just did. And here, <coughs> I'm sorry, this uh, tells us to go to step three. So, which is the unpack, unpack subsequent libraries. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Uh, so, first for things first, caps on. I uh, like JCL. And let's do herc01 u for unpack. And let's put in here notify equals uh, herc01. You don't have to be herc01 to install, you just need to be a privileged user. But since this is a virgin version of uh, of uh, MBS 3.8, it makes sense to use herc01. I will, if this works, I'm gonna go and, and go and install it on our cloud MBS system. Um, that's here. Um, let's go here, uh, moshooks.io, yeah, this is the one up and running still, yeah, so I'm going to go install it on this system later on, but uh, let's get this running first, do we need to change anything here, let me see, high level qualifier, so it's going to install with high level qualifier of Brex, makes sense, you could very often go and change this. Okay, let's see what this is doing. So this looks like we can just run it straight as it is. Uh, job 002, condition code 8. Oop, what was that? Oh yeah, because we have the delete version step again, same thing. Um, let's go check in the output. Yeah. This all looks fine. Yeah. Oh, there's some code examples here. That's nice. We can play with those later. Okay, so that's done. Next step will be step four, I guess, install. So why don't we go and do this? It's here. Okay, caps on, highlight, JCL, and then let's go here and change Zerk 01i and for install. Again, I want to be notified notify so i don't have to look at the console for zero one um this copies yeah so this is the the rex interpreter which is being copied in sys2 linklib which in tk4 is the place where all the modified modules go sys2 linklib so that makes sense and then we and then the you have the procedure if you want to invoke it from batch that goes into proclib and then some modules that go into command proc so we can work with it from the TSO. I guess that would be the C list bindings. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can run this. Commission code zero. Oh, that was fast. Well, this machine here, this Windows machine is quite fast. It's a. Uh, I always forget. What is it? It's an i4770, 3.4 gigahertz. If you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, but want to have a very fast machine, go get yourself. This is an uh, Dell Optiflex 9020, which you can get on eBay for like $80. And then put in a bunch of RAM. I have like 24 gigabytes. And this machine screams. Um, anyway, so uh, let me see the install step here. All 000. I assume that's as intended and now step five was test rex okay let's go back we still if you if you if we're still here in this pds here in this um, partition data set brex installed so let's go there and we need step five which is test rex it's right over here okay so this is invoking rex in uh batch i guess yep and then and then running some of these examples including primes up to 30,000 let's make 50,000 because why not and so uh, caps on and let's do herb01 
FTE for test and again notify us Oak 01 so this should take a while to run um, do we still have yeah so why don't we do this here and then we can look at the CPU here and see what's going on uh, this should be fine Okay, let's launch it. Uh, nothing happened. Was something wrong? Uh, oh yeah, something went wrong. Job failed, JCL error. Yeah. So where is? Oh yeah, notify. I'm sure. At least half of you people already spotted uh, this error. So let's launch it again and let's keep an eye here on the CPU indicator. I could have given two CPUs because we have four in this machine, but uh, you know, that's plenty good. Uh, yeah, now it's running at 90 MIPS, 78 MIPS, 100. It's running and there's several steps here. There's about what, 13, 14 steps. And so we'll let it run here for a while. And we can go here. Ooh, it abandoned. I have a feeling that this could be related to this. Let's check again. That's not good. Sometimes if jobs are recursive, all these interpreters will run into problems. Recursion is for interpreters is really uh, not a good idea in my opinion. Um, some interpreters are better at it like Perl, some others are really not good at it. Did you see 175 MIPS here? Let's see, max rates. Yeah, 175 MIPS, not bad. So yeah, the 30,000 uh, was, we go, we go find out what the source is for this Rex, which is the prime search number. If it's recursive, um, that, that could just be a problem with recursion, but we'll see. This is still running. I'm surprised. Um, let's see here. Oh, it's doing primes right now. Did you see that? Oops. It was running primes. So that means that the problem was not the primes calculation before when we got the event. I don't know, I'll have to go find that. We could actually find that now. Oh, this is the one that, this is the one that went into 0C4. Um, let's see what went wrong here. Uh -huh. can't see what the problem is but however it was just before the prime so it may have been the, yes it's the primes actually that abandoned so I would assume that there's too many um, recursions just as I thought but we'll go find out later after the job is finished we have still, still haven't finished installing Rex all the way or Brex as it should be called um, but this is huge for TK4. Um, I, I'm, I hope that Jurgen is going to put this into his update nine, which is due at some point. It, it's been in it's been in the making for two or three years already, and uh, with some interruptions to to some accident that Jurgen experienced, unfortunately, but he's better now. But um, yeah, uh, this I'm sure this is going to get into TK4 update nine. Uh, there's going to be some TCP IP related stuff that's going to go in there. Uh, there's, I think, a better um, file transfer protocol for the terminal. It's going to go in there, a better sort. Um, Algol has been fixed. There's a bunch of things. So update 9 is really, I'm really excited about it. Can't wait for it to come out. I, I tested the uh, first version of it about a year and a half ago. And already I, I like that very much. But all this new thing I just mentioned, all this new stuff, is only going to come in in, in the next update, uh, on the next test release. 
uh, hopefully the Jurgen will not forget to include me again in as one of the testers but we'll find out so this is still running quite amazed okay it looks like it just finished let me see yes okay so let's go find out yeah so these are all return code zeros which means we've made a great uh, step forward with the installation um, so now we need to do cleanup so we go here and caps on zero one Rogue zero one clean up and they will just delete okay okay this will remove the installation files I'm not going to run this for now. I don't think there's a need. Um, I think since we updated some of the command procedure, we probably need to log out and log in again. Um, I would think. Nope, actually we don't. So it says here to check uh, through. Okay, so how do we use this? We go to here, command. Again, we can say here according to this. Uh, what was it? Yeah, so we could just say um, primes. Break mm. samples. Poetry. Huh. Um, Rx. Oh yeah, yield of firms, dying dives, absorbs. Okay. Yeah. So this seems to work. Let's go find out some, let's look at some of those examples. So, breaks, samples. Um, plot, 3D. Okay, let's try that. X. Plot 3D. Yeah, this works. So next step would be to do some real programming. And uh, Peter Jacobs the and and Michael, the ones who um, released this, they know that I have this obsession with the N Queens program. So they prepared a test program for me. So let's uh, do this and. Queens Rex. We're going to put it into Rex samples. Okay. Uh, text. TSL. Okay. So let's go check it out. Where is it? Here. Yeah. So that's the one they wrote with. Here you have to specify. You could change it easily so it inputs with parse, um, but right now it's um, switch of report. Also, it also calculates the. It also shows the board. So let's do with eight, and let's go run it. Go to command mode and say Rex and Queen. Okay, twelve. Keyword requires matching then clause. So let's go check it out. So that's uh, line 12. Apparently there's an error in there. Line 12. Oh, okay. I already see what the error is here. That should be or, and it got translated as, is there any more of this? This is running. 
Beautiful. Uh, this is a big step forward uh, because there's all kinds of stuff we can do. That took five. That took five seconds on this computer. So uh, remember, this is an interpreter. It's not compiled, right? Um, if you wanted to uh, go here. Let's do it with six and then let's print out the boards. Okay, let's run it again. And beautiful. Very, very nice. Prints out the board. So this is a black field and this is a white field and the Q are the queens. So this is a six by six. You could of course run it with 10 by 10 or I think the world record is 25 or 26 right now. Um, but uh, the, the calculation scales potentially one thing that I like. So they're based this end queen off of my uh, PL1 and assembler and I guess Fortran and a couple of others that I wrote uh, in the Go language and in C. And what's special about this, there's no recursion. You could do this with recursion or you could do this with backtracking. I do it backtracking because by avoiding recursion, we can, we can uh, amp up this number quite a bit dial it up maybe to 13 14 15 and not run out of stack if you if you do recursion you really testing also the operating system and if it's compile language the compilers uh, efficiency at uh, allocating and destroying stack and, uh, and so I don't really like that so I this is flat doesn't use recursion it uses backtracking and that's all in CPU and you have a good cache uh, CPU with a good cache this will all run within the cache at very fast uh, speed. Uh, I've said this in other videos, but it needs to be said again. When you see a CPU being advertised, like we saw here at 3.4 gigahertz, right? Uh, where is it? Mm. Uh, here, 3.4 gigahertz. That is only if you are within the level one cache. If you go to level two cache, you're most likely running about 300, 200, 300. Um, uh, megahertz and if you're running outside the cache if you have to fetch a lot from memory then you're running maybe at three megahertz so uh, this is, can be deceiving uh, don't think that everything is going to run at that speed in fact the majority is not going to run at that speed uh, it depends a little bit on design the application now recursion will force this much lower because recursion will have to allocate stack you're really running outside of what's in the cache so um, you need to know a little bit about CPU architecture if you want to understand the, the marketing claims of this of these guys. Um, so this seems to work. You can run it also in batch, obviously. And we just saw a test for that. The test is here. Um, right. So if you look at this, this is all ran in batch. So, very nice. Very, very nice. So I, I'm actually very happy with this. I, job well done, Peter and Michael. I uh, admire you for this work. This is a great advancement for the MBS 3.8 community. I really hope that Jurgen is going to put this in update 9. I'm pretty sure he will. I, I mean, this is one big thing that was missing. And I think now that we have, Bre that we have Rex in MBS 3.8, now that we have TCP with TCP IP binders for C, and uh, some of the other advances i think the best times for mvs 3.8 um, are ahead of us and and as you can see here you give people a platform to start thinking of, about what they like to do and start innovating there's no limits to what can be done and and um, ibm i think i've had some meetings with them in the last couple of weeks ibm understands that you know, if you want to make the mainframe great again, to use a political statement here, uh, if you want to make the mainframe great again, you need to start with developers. And when Steve Ballmer said uh, in that very famous video, developers, 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 that it, he was 100% right. It is all about the developers. So when you, if you want to make the mainframe great again, you got to start with the developers. If you want to uh, have the developers start coding for it, you need to give them the tools, you need to give them something, a good starting point, a platform. And MVS 3.8 is a great platform. Now, if, I don't know if IBM is listening here or not, but if you gave us MVS XA, you would see, because that 31-bit, we can have a two gigabyte address space, you would see 
innovation and you would see developer uh, involvement and community strength go uh, orders of magnitude higher i mean there's no limit to what could be done if we had mbs xa if we had uh cobol uh 31 bit compilers and pl1 31 bit compilers and hopefully even c the c compiler but if if, you, if ibm doesn't want to give us a c compiler that's okay we'll bring our own compiler because we can use gcc but pl1 uh 31 optimizer compiler and cobol uh, OSVS2 will compile 31 bit would be greatly appreciated. Give us MVS XA and you'll see what we'll make out of this. We'll, this could be a huge movement and the best days for the mainframe could still be ahead of us if we have a little bit of help from IBM. But anyway, you can see what we've already done in 24 bit and within the limits of 24 bits, just simply amazing. I love this stuff, I'll be using it a lot and um, I'm sure I'm going to make some more videos, but you now saw how to install it's really easy how to use it it's really easy um, if you have any other questions on how to do it please post them in the comments below this video i'm quite sure that both peter and michael are going to be watching these comments and going to respond to questions and to uh, and to uh, other observations and if you like this particular video do press press on the thumbs up button especially if you like rex on mbs 3.aj uh, i would encourage you to press on the thumbs up button and if you haven't subscribed as usual, please subscribe now. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Goodbye.